Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahi rahman ar-rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhum yanfa'una bima alimtana. Wa alimna ma yanfa'una. Wa zin ilman yakrimi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Our praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That gives great opportunity to come together in this great conference. Alhamdulillah, to benefit from each other. It's always beneficial when we see other believers, right? Other Muslims, alhamdulillah, especially at the times that we are going right now. That's uplifting to see 25,000, 30,000 Muslims in one area, mashallah. So may Allah bless you and you guys go back to your families and your communities and benefit them. And of course, we make dua for our brothers and sisters in Gaza to give them victory over their oppressors and free their lands. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. When we talk about whispers of shaitan, um, before we get into that, that main topic, it's something that all of us deal with, right? Everything that everyone deals with that in terms of shaitan whispering to us, different voices in our heads and so, and so forth. And how does that, where does that really come from? And to kind of lay down the basis of that, to go back to the story of Adam alayhi salam, when, of course, when shaitan or Iblis did not want to bow down to Adam alayhi salam, the story that we know very well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah A'raf, chapter number 7 in the Qur'an, what the, when Sh Sh Iblis was getting kicked out of that area because he didn't want to prostrate, like any other person gets kicked out of an area, hopefully not this room, but any other place, right? They are quite angry and they have things they want to like, you know, mouth out when they're leaving. And so Shaitan does the same thing. As he's leaving the room, we're leaving that area, if you will, he, he talks back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, A'udhu billahi shaitan ar-rajim. He tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your followers are going to be making this dua to go on Surat al Mustaqim, which is Surah Fatiha that we do every single day. And he said that I am going to sit on that Surat al Mustaqim. Exactly the same place me and you want to go, he's going to sit on it, right? And then he said, He says that I'm going to come to them from in front of them and from behind them and on their right and on their left. And you're going to see that most of those people are just not going to be thankful to you, okay? He's swearing by this, that this is what he's going to do. And when we talk about the whispers of shaitan, you see it's quite serious. That he's going to come between, from me and you on that surat al-mustaqim, which we all want to be on. Don't go, don't go anywhere else, right? But he's going to come from this front and the back, the right and the left, and he's going to try to attack us, try to whisper at us. Ibn Abbas, in the tafsir of this hadith, it's mentioned that when he, when he talks about it, he's going to come from the right and, and the front and the back and so forth, that it's mentioned that when he says when he's come from the front, He's going to try to make us forget about the hereafter, al-akhirah, right? Think about when you're driving, you're going to go somewhere, right? And a train comes and kind of blocks you and makes you distracted. Same thing, we're trying to go to the hereafter. That's where we want to go. That should be all of our focus, right? But he's going to come and try to make sure that we forget about that. And then when it talks about that he's going to come from behind us, he's going to whisper the materialism. Yeah, the hereafter is nice, but hey, you want those granted counters. You want that Tesla. You want this house. You want that type of furniture. And he's going to try to distract us. He's going to whisper that from behind us. And then he said that when coming from the right of us, he's going to give us doubt in our deen. How do you know about the Quran? How is that true? What did, who made Allah? How about the Prophet Wasallam? How do you know he was a true prophet? These types of doubts would even come out. And then when he says when he comes to the left, he's going to try to whisper and get you and in, us into sin. Right? Splitting relationships up with our families, not talking to our brothers and sisters, right? Things that we shouldn't be doing, financial tra transactions we shouldn't be involved in. It's a whole on attack that he's going to be trying to do. And these are the reality of the type of whispers that he's going to, be, that he's going to give us, if you will. Also that the Prophet wasallam also mentioned that all of us, when we're born, at least all of us here, have a Qur'in that's attached to us, right? Or a shaitan that's with us wherever we go. As the Prophet ﷺ mentions, That all of you are, have a Qur'an, the shaitan that's with you. And Aisha, she, you know, she's curious and she's wondering about the Prophet ﷺ, does, does he have one? And then the Prophet ﷺ says, yes, I have one. But Allah has assisted me over it and he has aslama, that he has surrendered. And he only commands me to do good, right? 
Well, there's a couple of things we could derive from that hadith. Number one, that everyone here in this room, including myself, has that Qur'an that's sitting with you. MashaAllah, they got in the room, other people didn't get in the room. So anyhow, so they're here. Hopefully they're benefiting from this lecture and they're learning something, right? But here also, from that hadith, we learn that the Prophet Sallallahu of course, he's on a whole nother level than, than us, with all with due respect to our, each other, that he made his Qur'an submit. The Prophet is praying Qiyam layl he's fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, he's helping people, right? He's always praying. Of course, that, that Qur'an is going to give up. Now, we could do the same thing also. Everyone here has that Qur'an, but that Qur'an could just get tired. Let's say that this sister, this brother, they're only praying, they're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet says that when you enter your house and you say Bismillah, just entering your door, the Qur'an, that shaitan says, there is no home for me tonight. That I have to sleep outside, right? It doesn't get no comfort. And the Prophet also said that when you eat, if you say Bismillah, you say the Basmalah, then that shaitan or that Qur'an doesn't eat with you. Right? We all know what happens when you don't eat. We get a little grumpy, we get weak. Right? Even to the point, the Prophet says that if you eat and you forget, and later on you say, you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that the shaitan vomits that food out because now it's prohibited for, um, for him to eat and intake. So we have this ability to make our Qur'an subdue him, to suppress him, or, so that he doesn't have this type of control and this type of uh, effect on us, if you will. So that's, that's also possible. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned, or at least one thing I should say, that Ibn Qayyim rahimullah, in his book of Fawa'id, this book that he wrote about benefits, he talks about the doors, madakhil, yani, that the shaitan will come to me and you. And what are the certain avenues that we have to be aware of where shaitan will come and he will start whispering, right? He will come, if you will. And we talk about that Qur'an that's with you. It's literally like those, those cartoons of that little devil that's there that's just trying to get you to not worship Allah, trying to forget things, right? It's kind of whispering. So he mentions three doors. He says the number one door that all of us need to be really aware about is the door of the bab of ghadab, of angry, or anger, if you will. Now this is the number one door where shaitan comes. Now we're all Benny Adam, we all get angry, we all, we all make mistakes, right? Um, and we all know sometimes when people get angry, they look crazy, right? They look really, really weird sometimes. To the extent, they almost look like they're intoxicated. They don't even know what they're saying anymore. They're saying all type of blasphemy type stuff about their own spouse, their own children sometimes, right? Veins are coming out of their, their mind, they look kind of, their neck, they look kind of crazy looking. And that's when shaitan comes and says, you know what, go tell that person this. You're like, all right, I'm going to go tell that person that. And then, we'll tell them again. And you say, all right, I'm going to tell them again. And you feel so powerful. Because what? You're vulnerable at that state, right? And shaitan comes at that door when you're most vulnerable. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu says that if you're in, in that state of anger, he says, la, la, he, said, he said, yes, Mo, just be quiet. Don't talk. Because we all know when we get angry, we say things, what happens? An hour later, you have to go back to your spouse and say, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry I said that. I shouldn't have said that, right? Like half our life is this, right? right? You, keep, you have to keep on doing these type of moments, right? And so you're always regretful. Like, no, I didn't mean to say that. And I didn't mean to call you that name. Your children, you have to go back to. You have to go down to them and say, I didn't mean to say this to you, even though you wrote all over the wall, right? You're not supposed to do that. But anyhow, right? And so he's saying that if you're angry, just don't talk. And then he says that if you are standing, then sit down. And if you're sitting down, then lay down. I, don't, I haven't seen much people laying down and just like getting crazy and getting angry and yelling at people. Usually that no one's laying down in their bed like, hey, right, yelling at their kids. I've probably done that once or twice myself now, I'm thinking about it now, but anyhow. So here he's trying to change your state that you're in. So shaitan doesn't take advantage of you in that moment. And then what happens? What you're gonna end up being regretful. And one thing he also mentioned is that if you're angry, make wudu, right? The water will cool down, the fire, right? It makes you go to the bathroom, change the area that you're in, and believe me, you'll have a different state. And of course, saying "A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim" is one of the best things you can do when you're angry. And believe me, Wallahi al-Azim, that one of the best thing that works. Um, also, the, that Ibn Qayyim Rahim Allah mentions uh, what is another door in terms of when shaitan will come to us, and he, called, he says that the door of lust, the door of shahawat. When the when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made Jahannam. He told Jibril, go look at Jahannam. And when he came back, he says, nobody will go to this area. If they could see the fire, if they would even look at it, nobody would want to do that in their right mind, pretty much. They would only want to do good. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, go back. And then he comes back, he says, I'm afraid everybody would go there. 
Because what? They said that Jahannam is surrounded with shahawat, desires, right? Keep on getting this more money. Keep on working a little bit more. Don't worry about Juma. The parking's so terrible at the masjid. Just, just pray the Ohara at your, at your job. You'll make next week, right? Your business is going down. Your delivery is coming right now, right? Just keep on working. We'll work on Saturdays. Your family could see you next week. And guess what? You start getting negligent of your, of your responsibilities. You want to keep on lusting for more money of that bigger house, of this and that. And it keeps you busy. It keeps you distracted. How many of us ever bought something and right when we bought that thing, we came home, we started thinking about the model that's better, better than it. We started saying like, gosh, I should have gone for the bigger screen or that iPhone with just a little bit more memory. I don't know why I did that. Or I got this model car and you know what? I should have got the one with the leather now. And it just starts killing you. And you're going online, you keep on checking prices, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, to make sure you got the best deal. And Shaitan's just laughing at the, in the back there. Because what? He knows that's one of our weaknesses is lust. That we keep on wanting to go after that, and guess what? You keep on whispering that to us, so we forget that what? That hereafter, we're all, whether we're all trying to get to. The last door that he mentions that, we're, that Shaitan will try to come to us is, is a door of ghafla, of negligence. We're being neg neglectful of certain things. You say, you know what, I want to pray five times a day, but maybe I will wait to this time that happens. I'll wait next year. Hajj, you know, once I get married, then that's something that I would do. People get married in their 30s now, subhanAllah, right? You know, that's like half your life already gone already, right? So, or I will wear hijab at this time, or I will do this, or you know what, I'll do this for my parents, or I'll do this for my family member. And you start neglecting certain things. And it keeps on telling you to wish for this and wish for that. And that's something that Shaitan will continue to whisper for that. So for us to be careful about these three doors, ghadab, anger, desires, and lust. But alhamdulillah, we have protections of this, of the Prophet has, has informed us, how can we protect ourselves from this Qur'an that just has this big mouth and he's just going at us all the time. Number one, it's kind of mentioned already, to just say, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, right? They say, ta'idh billah, right? Fata'idh billah, that say, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Anytime you feel this whispering going on, anytime you feel like, you know, I'm going to click on this video and I probably shouldn't click on it. Anytime you know it, I feel like this song is in my head and I really want to listen to it and maybe I just, I shouldn't be listening to it, right? Maybe I need to say, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim It's very, very simple. And then also we know Surah Falaq and Surah Nas as the Prophet ﷺ will read this before he will go to sleep and he will blow like a dry spit on his hands and then he will wipe his body for it as a protection. Ayatul Kursi is something that also that will give you protection from shaitan, from the whispering that if you think it's kind of heavy, it's to recite that. One thing that we all should somewhat memorize. Pray, uh, play, playing uh, Surah Al-Baqarah in your house as the Prophet said, keeps the jinns away for three days of your, in your house. It's a long surah, I know, I know. It's a really, really long surah, right? But they put it on YouTube, something, just play it, put a Bluetooth speaker on, right? Alhamdulillah, it does, it does the job also. It's good to recite it also in your own words. But play that in your house. Now you're playing Quran in your house, right? How can, like, you can't go wrong with that, right? So the, here are all these different type of things that the Prophet has, turns on and advises us, how do we so, you know, subdue this, these voices of shaitan, these whispers. And also one of the best things, my dear brothers and sisters, is also to keep good company. Hamda, you're at this conference. No one's thinking about Netflix videos right now and the and Hulu series right now. No one's trying to think about songs to play right now. You got lectures, you got Hamda Muslims all over the place, mashallah, you got a bazaar. Maybe that's a little bit, that could be a fitna also, but anyhow, right? <laughs> but anyhow, so you have a lot of, a lot of other things that at least are reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not going to get that when you get back home. Get back into the routine of the faucet link, uh, leaking, go back to work, this and that. And that's where these things kick in. That you want to make sure that you're part of a good community. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're frequently to your masjid. That's a good place where your kids can learn and, and get some nice friends. And you yourself could, um, could have some friends over there. Have good people that remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes our WhatsApp groups, sometimes you kind of question those friends on the WhatsApp groups, right? Sometimes they're posting things to like, why are you sending me this for, right? I don't really need to watch that. It's funny. It's a funny video. But maybe I don't really need to be watching that. And the last thing I want to, I want to leave for everyone is, to talk, is that since we all have this whispering, right? And especially this is a good note for all the spouses out there. Is that everyone we have all this whispering and it's the Qur'an is trying to bring us down. One thing the Prophet mentioned that he said that shaitan has his throne over water. 
He tries to mimic Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne is over water. And shaitan has his, his all the shayateen around him. And he says that, the Prophet says that he, he gathers them around. And he says that who has done some type of evil today or caused people to do evil? And people will raise their, oh, the shayateen will raise their hand and say, I did so and so and I did this and I did that. And then shaitan will say, go back. You didn't do anything. And then a person would say, I went to a couple, a husband and a wife, and I did not leave them until I was able to split them up. And then Iblis will say, come close to me and sit next to me. You have done a great thing. One of the biggest things that shaitan wants to do, yes, he wants us to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he wants to split up families. That's one way to get to it, right? One way to, to break up the Muslim community. One of the greatest things that he wants the shayateen to do. So I want to remind you something that Yusuf Islam did. If you remember his story very well, when he had his brothers in front of him and he was the finance minister and he recognized his brothers and he could have punished them, right? And he could have put them down because now he's in power. But what did he say? What verse did he, what did Allah SWT mention in the Quran? What did he do? He says that these, that he thanks Allah that bringing his family back after shaitan has caused enmity between, between me and my brothers. He blames Shaytan, right? It's his brothers that throw him down the well. We all know that, right? That throw him down the well, that's an evil thing. We don't want any family members to ever do that. But what he does, he blames Shaytan for that. That Shaytan got the best of them. And especially for spouses, when, when you have that argument, some things are gonna happen, you're gonna headbutt sometimes. You say, you know what, maybe Shaytan got the best of that person tonight. And they said this and that. Yes, and they talked about my mom, and they talked about, I talked about their, my mother-in-law. I did this, I did that. I went on all the red zones that I should have gone to. But you know what you say, you know, I know good in that man, I know good in that woman. I've been married to them for X amount of years, and Shaitan probably just got the best of them at that time. And that's one way, one of the best things you could do, to give them the benefit of a doubt. Because we're Benny Adam, we make mistakes. That you know what, that get, they got the best of that person. Whether it's your spouse, whether it's a friend, whether it's another family member. And inshallah, try to keep those relationships as shaitan wants to break them down and that what gets them to be happy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the whispering of shaitan and protect us. Subhanahu rabbika rabbi izzati amma yasifoon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa